the Dave Hooker Show, represented by Banks and Jones, Tennessee's trial attorneys. Play to win, banksjones.com. The Dave Hooker Show. A presentation of Off the Hook Sports. Objective insight, expertise, top guest. Available on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and the Off the Hook Sports app. Download now for free. Also available on offthehooksports.com. I compute and obey. Now to Dave Hooker. Ready. What a difference a day makes. Suddenly the NCAA and Tennessee are at odds. And honestly, it seems that Tennessee is just fine with that. So we'll have breaking news, actually. Hit that like and subscribe button. And I tell you what, it's not my goal to talk NCAA issues, especially with what Tennessee has been through lately. But there's not a better person that you could possibly have on the program than Jimmy Himes, who joins us now. So I'm going to get to Jimmy earlier rather than later. First, Caleb Calhoun, how are you, sir? I'm good. How are you doing, Dave? Good, man. We got a lot going on, brother. Here we go. So uh, we're going to dip into the allegations, the NCAA allegations. How serious are those with Jimmy Himes? Dante Plowman's response, which has evolved even since Jimmy and I spoke uh, last night. And poor Jimmy thought he was my mentor. And then he would uh, let me go and spread my wings and get out of the nest. And now it seems as if he's my mentor again, because I was calling him for advice yesterday. Uh, Spire Sports, how much is it to blame? Uh, I don't think at any point you want your collective being named in these situations. So in and of itself, that's bad. How concerned should ball fans be? We'll get to that. And is the NCAA playing with fire with this investigation? I'm not the only one that thinks so. Let's bring you in right now. Award-winning sports journalist covering Tennessee for, I don't know, do we say how many years, Jim? Started 1985, so that's 38 plus. 38 Start. years and a half. There we it's go. So you got to cover the 85 team as your first team. That's epic. It, it was. And and that uh, that's still one of the most enjoyable seasons I've ever had covering Tennessee football. That that team overachieved. They weren't extraordinarily talented like the 98 team was. But what a fun year that was. Um, and my first year was 98, though, Jimmy. So I may have you beat just <laughs> yeah. a little bit. <laughs> you got a ring I, I, yeah I don't, I don't see one but maybe they got me this bracelet that said leave our sports information uh director alone by the way for any georgia fans kudos tip of the cap to claude felton he was absolutely uh one of the best jimmy i think you would agree as a tennessee sports in, or, i'm sorry as an sec sports information director he was terrific i had a long long relationship with claude felton and uh he was always wonderful whether we're setting up interviews I do remember one time I covered Tennessee tennis and uh, in uh, 1992, I believe it was, uh, Tennessee went down three times to Athens, Georgia, and I went all three times. They had the SEC tournament, uh, they had the NCAA's team, and then NCAA individual. I went down there three different uh, times to go cover those, and when I met Claude down there, he said, it's time for you to pay, pay property taxes in the state of Georgia. You've been down here so often. Yeah, great. Just an absolute great guy. All right. So let's go ahead and get to today's tough question. It might have to do with the NCAA more than mm-hmm. Claude Felton. Just just maybe, Jimmy, that's the direction I was going to go. Is that how you would lead off a show back in the day before you were kind of retired? <laughs> Don't bury the lead. Yes, that's the way I would lead off. The show. Today's tough question. Take a side. Take a stand. The Dave Hooker Show, a presentation of offthehooksports.com. Jimmy, I just want to go to you with your sources, completely play off you here for a second. You are as tied in still, even if you're in semi-retirement, as anybody that is out there. So today's tough question brought to you by our great, great friend Don Self at State Farm. Customer service still matters. I'll tell you more. First of all, what are your thoughts on the allegations? How serious are they? And then we'll get into Tennessee's response, which is almost as interesting as the breaking news uh, by Pat Forty originally that Tennessee was under another NCAA investigation. Thoughts? Well, first off, you don't ever want the NCAA to come in and investigate your program because sometimes they can conduct an investigation in one direction and they find out something in another. 
Um, ask Bruce Pearl about that from when they came in to look at Lane Kiffin back in 2009. So um, you think, and you mentioned this last night. So you think that being on campus for Lane Kiffin did directly lead to the, the Bruce Pearl issue. I, I heard that as chatter, but never really knew if that was true or not. Well, Bruce Pearl told me that. So I'm going to say probably, <laughs> but yeah. that's what he, that's what he claimed. So, so the point is you don't ever want the NCAA on your campus investigating. Now, getting down to the brass tacks of, of what I know, what I've seen, what I've read, what I've talked to with sources, it looks like the NCAA uh, is come in and tried to retroactively enforce rules that were not in place previously. I don't think that's fair. I, I, I agree with Donnie Plowman on that. That is not the way to conduct business. You can't come in and say, okay, here are our rules. And by the way, 10 months ago, you violated our rules. Therefore, we're going to punish you. I think that is absurd. But I, the NCAA in many things, what they do, I think is absurd. So uh, is it a concern for Tennessee? It is a concern. If it's directly related to Nico Imaleva and his situation with a private plane, he was under, my understanding, contract with Spire Sports. So they're, footed, they're paying for it. It's not the University of Tennessee. Tennessee is not going to fly a guy in on a private plane and yeah. pay for it. That, that, I would assure you, did not happen, would not happen. So, But Spire Sports is, uh, has got uh, EMLA under contract even going into his junior year, I guess it was. Yes. So, so it, I'm looking at that and thinking, okay, uh, it's an NIL deal. It's allowed in the state of California. I don't see the foul. Now, that's not the only issue, though. Spire Sports has 200 athletes under contract in 11 different sports, is my understanding. Are there other situations? Are there other sports that they're looking at that they feel like there were inducements that led to players coming in? Uh, it is unrealistic to think that collectives aren't using NIL deals to help recruit players. Ask Texas A&M about that when they signed the number one class a couple of years ago. So they're absolutely doing it. And for the NCAA to say, no, you can't do that, they got their head in the sand. So, I look, I don't know how serious a lot of this stuff is. I don't know all of the allegations that are out there. But on the surface, from what I know and the people I've talked to, I actually think the NCAA is uh, uh, barking up the wrong tree. All right. So Pat Forty is lighting up our message board. So is the – lawsuit that's apparently been fired since we've been on the uh shot out since we've been on the air uh about a, a lawsuit so we're aware of that we're going to get to all that but uh one thing at a time with uh jimmy himes his appearance brought to you today by don self estate farm customer service still matters in the greater chattanooga area everybody wants a cheap rate but what happens when you file that claim state farm don self and his team take customer service very seriously over 40 years he is your State Farm agent in the Chattanooga area. All right, Caleb, fire, go. All right, so uh, I just want to get this out there for those who may have not been living, who have been living under a rock, that there was an investigation. It was reportedly uh, major yeah, over NIL. Yeah, for those that have not been living, that, that would be a problem for them. But yes, yeah, go ahead. But, but, but to address <laughs> Jimmy's point, we, we have to. I, I wanted to make this clear real quick for them with the Nico thing. According to the New York Times, at the heart of the investigation is that Nico Iamaliava was chartered on a private jet to Tennessee by Spire Sports in February of 2022. Now, Jimmy, uh, what I want to point out is, okay, so that happened in February of 2022. Nico Iamaliava committed in March of 2022. The Athletic wrote a pretty detailed article at that time that made it an open secret that Nico Iamaliava got, what was it, $8 million to go to Tennessee in that big contract. That's the NCAA, debatable the amount, but he did get a lot. He got a okay. lot. Yeah. The NCAA then came out with their new NIL regulations in May of 22, a full two months after Nico committed and a full three months after this quote unquote private jet charter happened. Now, then they said they will retroactively punish people. They said then that they reserve the right to retroactively punish people for NIL violations. I think they came at Florida state earlier in the year. Mm -hmm. They did. Um, it, is there any way that that holds up in an actual civil court to retroactively punish people for particularly when they're a nonprofit entity? Yeah. And Jimmy, if I can jump in, you and I talked last night to me, it's I, I, we're old enough. Caleb's not, but I remember when the speed limit when went from 60 to 70, when they put it to 70, I don't remember getting any sort of refund on my speeding tickets previously. 
But that's you know, not how more, this went. It would be if they moved it from 70 to 60 and then ticketed you from going 70 when the speed limit was 70. Uh, no, that, yeah. that that's my point. They shouldn't do things yeah. retroactively. That's my point, Jim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and I agree with that. And that's uh, when I mentioned retroactively earlier, that's exactly what I'm talking about. You can't come in later. So to Caleb's point, was that going to stand up in court? I doubt it. Uh, the NCAA, I thought when they hired Charlie Baker that there would be some sensibility to their rulings. Uh, now, I don't know yet, but right now I'm having questions about that. I've heard good things about Baker, but this one doesn't look like it um, uh, holds any water at this point based on what I know. Again, it, are there other allegations outside of Nico Imaleva that they are looking at? Possibly. The number one item is the one with Nico. So that's the one we're hearing about, reading about. But there might be some other things that were occurring that uh, that Spire Sports was not supposed to do. Uh, for example, they were not supposed to be in direct communication with the coaching staff. Uh, did Tennessee, somebody at Tennessee tell Spire, hey, we're recruiting four quarterbacks, but the number one guy is Nico, so go get an NIL deal with him. That's not permissible. It wasn't then. And if Tennessee did that, they're wrong. I don't know that that happened, though. But to retroactively go back and, and hit people for rules that were not in place 10 months ago, that's ridiculous, and I do not think it would hold up in court. I, I agree with you, but I want to ask this question. Is there a chance that at any point Nico could be suspended? The opening games, UTC, I still remember back in the day, Jimmy, when you and I worked together, it seemed like Florida would always suspend players for the first two games against basically nobody. Do you think it could even get close to that? Brought to you by Tennessee Cider Company, the original hard cider of the Smoky Mountains. Use the promo code HAT, that's HAT, to receive some free swag with your cider order available most anywhere in the United States, tncidercompany.com, tncidercompany.com. What are the chances out of 100 that Nico would be sat down for being the focal point of the early reports of this investigation? Well, one quick note, there was one year when Florida had a player that had a two-game suspension, so he was suspended for Eastern Michigan, played against Tennessee, and then suspended the next week. How's that for diverting the rules? Yeah. Uh, is, is there a chance Nico could be suspended on a one to to one hundred, one to ten? What are we doing here? I forgot uh, what you said. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> percentage uh, zero to one hundred. I'd go. In my opinion, based on what I know right now, I would say five to ten percent. That's about where I am. What about you, Caleb? I think it's more likely now he doesn't get suspended because I think if Tennessee is going to go declare open war on the NCAA to say that they have the strongest case possible, part of having the strongest case is not caving at all on anything on this. So I think if they suspended Nico, even considered it, that would hurt their case in declaring open war on the NCAA, which they have done. So you're at zero percent. Right. I'm at I'm at now negative zero, be below zero percent <laughs> if it's possible. I, I actually think this increased the likelihood that he never gets suspended. Yeah, honestly. Caleb, okay. Caleb now thinks there's going to be a double header against the mocks. So <laughs> I think I think Hypo will leave Nico. Do you guys? Oh, do you guys remember the um? What was it? The Manziel signing autographs game where he was suspended for a half, and then Kevin Sumlin let him come in in the second half and just throw it all over the field. And I, I think they're going to do that with Nico. I think now Hypo is just going to leave Nico in in the fourth quarter against UT Chattanooga when the game is 57 to nothing and say, hey, throw two more touchdown passes just to stick it to the NCAA. <laughs> well, he might do that anyway. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> that's, 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 that's true. Okay, we, we've got a lot to get to, and Jimmy's limited on time. So I'm, I'm going to change gears here. Um, and that is Dante Plowman's response. Uh, K, uh, Caleb, help me fill this out so we can make sure the listeners are aware but I know Jimmy is, they question the morality of the NCAA. They uh, question how they could be an exemplary program in terms of how they govern themselves. And now they're suddenly under investigation again. They question the NCAA's ability, which we all have, about uh, handling uh, NIL and how behind the curve uh, they were. I mean, for goodness sake, my son and I are just getting the NCAA football game back, and I think he was five the last time we played it, and that's part of NIL. So um, anything else before I get to Jimmy on this very strong response um, about the letter sent to the NCAA from Don D. Plowman, the chancellor, that we need to know about anything that stood out there to you, Caleb? 
Don Day Plowman in a letter to the NCAA, and it was a response to Charlie Baker, openly called the NCAA morally wrong, effectively called them a failure, and has gone. I don't know if she went for uh, Jimmy. You could tell me, but I'm on. I'm. I got the vibe that she sent this letter um, out of a desire for positive clicks on Twitter from Tennessee fans and the standing ovation she got last night at Thompson Bowling Arena more than anything else. Okay, Jim, I'm going to kick it to you, but I'm going to take it a bit further. This is historic. Tennessee always complies, turns stuff over, comply, comply, comply. And you can jump on our poll question for the day. Uh, it's on the YouTube page, and uh, now it's pretty one-sided. Uh, what do you think of Donde Plowman fighting back against the NCAA? Go get it their week. Uh, comply, comply, comply has no effect. 95% say go get it their week. Uh, 5% say it has no effect. Nobody has said just comply. Jimmy, I don't think that people truly understand how different this approach has been from Tennessee over the past 50 years. That letter to me was almost as surprising as Tennessee being uh, underneath uh, an, another NCAA investigation. Your thoughts? When I first read it, I thought it was probably too strongly worded. And then uh -huh. I was reminded of what Plowman did when they announced the firing of Jeremy Pruitt, when she said that it was shocking, some of the recruiting violations. And so she has been prone to hyperbole. So when I thought back to that, I wasn't surprised at how strong she worded it. I also think back to when Mac Brown had a wide receiver that the NCAA wouldn't clear. And he came out with some very harsh words about the NCAA. They finally cleared the receiver after, a, what, a four-game suspension. So I'm wondering if um, uh, if coming out with a strong comment like that, uh, Caleb, to your point, it certainly gets attention. It certainly gets people to look at it and say, man, did, did you see what she said? And though from my perspective, I thought it might have been a little bit too strong. I get where she's coming from. Obviously, she's feel passionate about this. And if you're if you feel like you were, have been wronged, which he obviously does, that can fuel the fire a little bit. It's fueled my fire when I've been accused of doing something I didn't do, kind of ticked me off, and I've responded that way. And I think a lot of people do. So I, I think that's where she's coming from. This is wrong. We shouldn't be accused of this. You can't retroactively punish us for rules that were not in place. I agree with that, Caleb. And now we're told there's a lawsuit that has been filed or is going to be filed. What's the latest? So we get Jimmy's take on that. Yeah. So the Tennessee Attorney General has filed a lawsuit in conjunction with the Virginia Attorney General against the NCAA, saying that saying that limitations on using NIL for recruiting is an antitrust violation, and. Basically, they are saying that you can't put stipulations on how NIL is applied. And this is the exact same lawsuit they filed three years ago when they basically said that you can't have any stipulations on how players get paid to begin with, which led to NIL. So they're joint filing this lawsuit. I mean, Jimmy, my question is, if... If they joint file, if the Supreme Court's going to rule that NIL, that any, that not allowing NIL is a violation of the Antitrust Act, won't they also rule that regulations on NIL is a violation of the Antitrust Act? Yes. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So, uh, I again, there may be some other parts of this investigation that I don't know about. What I know about publicly and what I've been able to find out. I don't think the NCAA has a strong case, and I think it's ludicrous to impose a, a penalty or to, to adopt rules and then uh, uh, apply penalties in 10 months ago for something that might happen or a year ago or whatever, retroactively. I, I, I just don't think that's fair. I, I certainly agree with Dondi Plowman on that and with the Tennessee fans on that one. That's why I'm, um, I'm, I'm really, the, and the NCAA doesn't have a whole lot of teeth right now, right? So I'm going to be really curious to see where this one goes. Uh, the whole time when NIL was set up, all these folks in college athletics talked about in the NCAA, you can't use this as a recruiting inducement. How do you get around that? Yeah. That's... What do you think? What do you think these guys in the portal are doing? They're putting their name in the portal to try to get the best NIL deal. That's recruiting. So you've got to be an idiot to think that NIL is not going to be used in recruiting. Jim, do you think there is 
any chance that Don Day Plowman shot that letter off without approval from the SEC? Because the more I thought about it, I don't think so. Your thoughts, Rick Terry, Jewelry Design, they want to be your jeweler looking for affordable game day jewelry. How about the Fire Opals? A tr- Tennessee tradition, rickterryjewelry.com, rickterryjewelry.com. I don't think this was gone rogue by Don Day Plowman. And now that we've seen lawsuits, I think it just speaks to that as well. I, I think she had the full support of the university, which she doesn't need because she's the chancellor. But I also believe she had probably had the full support of the SEC. Thoughts? I would think so. Uh, I don't know that she did. Uh, I was uh, told that the UT attorneys uh, gave her some advice, maybe help write it, I don't know, but approved it. And then I also had a guy that's really close to the program that texted me and said, well, she got bad advice for coming out with such a strongly worded letter. So I've, I've had text messages saying two sides of this. I don't think she would do it without the attorneys. I don't think she would do it without, obviously, Danny White and UT being involved, those folks. To go through the SEC and Greg Sankey, he doesn't like to be blindsided. So I think he probably would have would have rubber stamped it or agreed with it because, look, Tennessee isn't the only one that's in this situation. You don't think Alabama and LSU and Georgia and, and other schools have been – and a and have been using NIL to help get players on their campus, either out of high school or through the transfer portal. So Greg Sankey does not want NCAA investigations of a lot of his programs retroactively. So, yes, I would certainly think he would have endorsed this letter. Okay, I want to kick so, this over to Caleb. I would kick this over to Caleb, but I do want to ask you this real quick. A lot of people are jumping on Pat Forty because the Greg Schiano thing, and he is the one who broke it. I, I've had no issues with Pat with with Pat's reporting. I know it's kind of, it's kind of your mantra, like it is mine. We don't rip other media members. I've never heard you do it uh, on the record. So, off the record, a lot. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so, but but Forty Jim, um, I've got no reason to think he he has an axe to grind. I don't care in what position you're in. If you get that tip, you should report it. Absolutely, it's ridiculous to blame the messenger. Did, look. Did anything Pat Forty report, was any of it in, untrue? No. And the New York Times is the one that came out first with Nico. Last I looked, Pat Forty doesn't work for the New York Times. There's Look, if somebody gives me a tip, whether I'm covering Tennessee or not, I'm going to – once I check it out, I'm going to go with it. The only reason you could get on Pat Forty if he reported something that was inaccurate. Otherwise, get your head out of the sand. He's a reporter. And it could have been anybody that got it, but he did. He's a very good reporter, and he's a friend of mine. I like the guy. Uh, so, uh, again, get off his back unless he reported something that was inaccurate. So, uh, to break down a couple of things. So, I want to get uh, different angles on this real quick. Because Don Day Plowman's response is basically, basically what you said, Jimmy. It's basically saying, how are you going to tell us – how are you going to enforce rules against us when you're changing the rules all the time and then retroactively come at us? Right now, the state, the action, the the state of Tennessee is saying, well, these rules are stupid anyway, and there should be no rules to begin with because they're dumb. What, which that's what that's what would go to court because so Donnie Plowman is saying these rules are unenforceable, and the state are saying that rules shouldn't exist. Period. Now, then we get to I'm with you. I think the SEC was behind it. I think the Big Ten was behind it too because let's be honest, SEC and Big Ten member schools. They want to get away from the NCAA, and they are tired of all of this. Well, so, Jimmy, where I get is, here's a question for you, because you've been covering for a long time, because we know Florida is under a similar investigation right now. Um, what's different about how the SEC can handle this now versus, as I'm sure you remember in 2002, when Alabama and Kentucky both got hit with sanctions, and that was a very big black guy for the league when Rory Kramer was commissioner, and he seemed a little mm-hmm. bit powerless to do anything about it then, didn't he? So, Jimmy, I want you to answer that question. Please hit the like and subscribe button. we got a ton of new viewers in. Go ahead, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and turn your notifications on. Sorry to interrupt, Jim. Go ahead, sir. I'm sorry. So, (laughs) you're asking me if if the SEC – I'm sorry. Go ahead with your question. What was it, Caleb? What's different about, like, I think that she does – I think they do have Greg Sinke's power now. Yeah. What puts Greg Sinke in stronger position to back Tennessee and Florida? Because I think Florida's going to join on to this lawsuit since they're under investigation – versus Roy Kramer, who was effectively powerless yeah. when Alabama and Kentucky both got slammed in 2002. Uh, what's different is the NCAA had a lot of power. 
a lot of power and what they said went and nobody was challenging them. And so what are you going to do whenever um, uh, they, and, and by the way, this is a voluntary organization. You don't have to be a member of the NCAA. Right. Now if you want to play college football, you do, but uh, the NCAA had a lot of power. And since then it has flipped the powers with the student athlete, the powers with basically public opinion a lot too. And so I think that you do have a lot more um, pushback from schools, from commissioners toward the NCAA. You got a lot more of that going on. Um, now, having said that, Michigan had had pushed back against Harbaugh, and the NCAA ended up suspending him. Michigan suspended him for three games, NCAA for three more, right? So they're not completely powerless, but they don't have basically the autonomy that they did <clears throat> 22 years ago. Therefore, I, I see a lot more people pushing back at the NCAA and winning those arguments. Let me ask you this, Jim. I'm going to start with you, and then we're going to move on because we got to discuss uh, how – how big a piece of the blame pie Spire uh, Sports gets. But uh, let me ask you this. Who do you think the leak is? Somebody leaked it to Pat Forty. I have no idea. I have a theory. Um, and so I'm going to throw this at you. And Caleb, your thoughts. Uh, I had someone tweet me way back in the Jeremy Pruitt investigation. And it, it, apparently this person had a relationship with Jeremy Pruitt. There was a screenshot. I could see his name. It was the direct message. And it was essentially a message in which I've got plenty of stuff to uh, talk about Tennessee when this initial investigation is complete. I believe it's probably Jeremy Pruitt called up Pat Forty or called up the NCAA and got the ball rolling as terms of a, a potential investigation. Those are my thoughts. Speculation. I don't know. I don't either. Uh, and, and I don't know if he certainly he would have reason uh, to go in that direction, but I, I don't know. Uh, how much he knows. I don't know how many, I don't know what he knows, uh, how many friends he has in the athletic department that would leak stuff to him to where he would know some stuff. I will tell you this. I had a long conversation with him before the NCAA ruling, and he told me a whole bunch of stuff about what was going to come down, and he was spot on. For example, he told me Tennessee was going to be get fined uh, uh, between 8 and $10 million, and they would buy their way out of a postseason ban. He was right. Caleb, you've got exactly three seconds to tell me who the leak is because Jimmy's running out of time. Well, no, I'm not. I think it's possible. I also want to think. I also think Jimmy Pruitt might be very angry that Donde Plowman gave Philip Fulmer that severance package and fired him for calls because Philip Fulmer. That's Donde Plowman's biggest mistake. Philip Fulmer never should have been able to walk away clean from what happened. I don't think Philip Fulmer's allowed to step on campus without getting a big lump sum of cash to walk away. Here we go. What the H? <laughs> what the? What was he thinking? Release the house. The Dave Hooker Show. K -k 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 keep cool. A presentation of OffTheHookSports.com. Tennessee fans love Spire Sports. You can't beat Spire Sports. You're there on your Christmas card list. You send them money to be in a volunteer club, and you get back like a coaster autographed by Britton Colquitt, I think. You don't get a lot, but you supposedly are supporting this, this fund. Um, but, Jimmy, we've said this S word, Spire uh, Sports, about 15 times, and I haven't even directed a question in that regard. Mm -hmm. How much are they to blame in this situation and maybe even more so than anything that the University of Tennessee has done? Well, if uh, if there are violations that occurred in regard to this, Spire Sports would be, uh, I would think, com uh, completely to blame. Uh, now, again, we don't know if they actually violated any rules. Uh, I do know that in the past, uh, any situation of, of a private plane flying a, a high school player, that is an extra benefit. And they would say a booster did that. So the booster's not allowed to do that. But now you got a collective. Is a collective a booster? Is that the NCAA defining them as a booster? So if they are a, quote, booster, then you have an issue. But they, Tennessee's also had players, do Spire, that have flown up to New York and been on Madison Square and, and, um, and had their names up on billboards and stuff like that. I, if there are violations that occurred, I'd have to put a lot of that on Spire. Tennessee, with this NCAA probation situation hanging over their head, I just can't imagine them jaywalking. So I think that, that if some somebody circumvented it, it would be Spire. However, I'll defend Spire on this. What rules were in place when they did what they did? Amen. So, I, it's, so I, I, don't, I don't really think there is blame, but if there is blame, I would have to point more towards Spire than Tennessee. Yeah, if you're – 
mean, if you don't know what the speed limit is, how are you supposed to do it? <laughs> yeah. And I could get back to Knox. Yeah, I could get back and forth to Knoxville and other places if there wasn't a speed limit like Wyoming. That'd be nice, Caleb. So, uh, Jimmy, I want to get I, I want to break this out real quick. Uh, attorney Tom Mars of Spire Sports uh, released a statement last night, basically said, I don't fully believe it, but I believe the gist of it, which is to say that in the details, he says that Spire Sports uh, inked a contract with Nico Iamaliava, independent of what school he was going to commit to. Sorry, don't believe that for one second. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, no, Jimmy, I don't believe that either. That's yeah. BS. Yeah, exactly. And then they said our they basically said their agreement was based on their thinking that he would become a great NFL player. So that's why they took that risk. But they did say the 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 most important line was and they 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 have a whole statement naming Nico specifically in response to this NCAA investigation. They say the agreement was fully consistent with the then existing NCAA NIL guidelines and had nothing to do with recruiting Nico to the University of Tennessee or any other school. Now, my question is. Was this another reckless move by Spire to name Nico based on a report from the New York Times when there's no official notice of allegations yet from the NCAA? Yeah, I'd say that probably wasn't a very smart move on their part to do that. <laughs> so, uh, and 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 look, and here's here's the thing too about uh, Nico. They're different states with different laws, right? So Missouri, Missouri, I'm sure you know this, Jimmy, but Missouri, Eli Drinkwitz can sit in the room with the guy giving the money and say, I think you should give him this much money. Yeah. And and in California, they have a law that allows you to accept NIL. In the state of Tennessee, they did not. They may have recently done it. But at that time, the state of Tennessee, you could not do that. You could not sign a high school player to an NIL deal. Uh, but different laws in different states makes this more complicated. So I, um, I think the NCAA, I mentioned this earlier, is barking at the wrong tree. I, I, I just, uh, unless there are other things that I don't know about that are not related to Nico and this private jet, I, I just don't see where anybody is at fault based on what I know right now. You're talking to somebody that still owes Jimmy a stake because he said Chris Winkie would be an all pro for four years. So have I said stupid things before? Like Kirby Smart was a terrible hire at Georgia. Yes, I've said that. Okay. <laughs> I've been that dude. But I think I'm right more times than not. Jimmy, would you agree with that? Not when we bet. Oh, that's a fair point. Okay. David so <laughs> he also didn't think Saban was a good hire at LSU. So, you know. Well, a lot of that wasn't okay. Uh, anyway, all right. <laughs> At the end of the day, if you had a better mortgage payment, um, does Tennessee even receive any sort of scholarship ban? Anything come out of this? And I'm bad journalism because I know you got to run. I'm going to ask a double question. I contend that Tennessee could be one of the pioneers, and now Virginia's have apparently joined the fold of destroying what little is left of the NCAA through lawsuits, and they may not even be running the NCAA basketball tournament one day. It's a lot to unpack. Thoughts? The Well, one, the, the, the strongest thing I think Tennessee would get would be a reprimand. Don't do this again. I do not see any scholarship reductions or any other penalty coming out of this based on what I know right now. If there's new information that comes out later today or tomorrow, I could change my mind. The other thing is, I think the NCAA under its current situation is is in deep trouble. I don't know if Charlie Barker uh, can can save him. I'm not sure if he can. I've heard a lot of good things about him from a number of administrators, but they it's it's hard to get a whole bunch of people. You got 133 what F, uh, F uh, FCS teams, mm -hmm. and, foot, and and then in basketball, what are there almost 350 teams? It's hard to get everybody in agreement on what NIL should look like on any rule, period. So that's going to be a massive problem for them. I could actually see football kind of breaking away, but I think the other sports would probably stay under the NCAA umbrella because they don't have the power to go out and make money like football can. Okay. Last thing. Impossible question, time frame. Does it affect this year at all? I, I will say this as a guy that's covered recruiting. I don't think these things have as big of an effect on recruiting as kind of a specter looming over the program as, as a lot of people do. I don't think kids really look into that. But uh, do, do we see any impact on the 2024 season in which we know that Josh Heupel is all in on? In my opinion, no. I don't think I so. don't think anything will come by that quickly. And if it does, Tennessee would appeal. And so I don't think it will impact this season at all. 
Yep. All right, Jimmy, I have a blessed day. Thank you, sir. I know you got the grandson uh, later today, so we want to see the tweets. My wife loves the tweets. She's like, oh, it's so cute. I've got a picture of him I'm going to send out. He is um, He's doing some DJ work. He's behind us, a little deal with the microphone and all that. He's he's uh, doing his best Sterling Hinton. You're going to like this one. <laughs> Sterling Hinton, the yes man Yes or no, who- does Spider Ster- Sports disband like the 12th man or not? Does what? Or no. no. Does Spire Sports go the way the 12th oh, man? Just, you know. No, I, I happen to have a couple sources at AM. That place was a fiasco. It was <laughs> way, I mean, it was so. this is not even the same ballpark, but I think Spire Sports needs to shut their mouth and just do their job. All right. Um, Jimmy, great stuff, man. Right. Thanks, guys. Y'all Jimmy, have a good day. Well, okay. that's really and then so somebody posted this on Twitter. I'm sorry, our message board. Um, at first I thought this could hurt recruiting, but really, if you're a player, why would you not want to go to a school that you will know will pay you and protect your NIL rights and won't take no crap by Dylan Plowman? We don't know if that's related to Dante Plowman or not. I want to speak to those lines. I've always thought that. By the way, it's Don Day, not Dante. You keep saying Dante, like Dante Stallworth. With Plowman? You're, 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 yeah. No, I've not said Dante. It sounds like you've been saying Dante. Dante. It sounds like you've been saying Dante. No, 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 no. Maybe I'm talking too fast because I'm excited. But uh, (laughs) because I I love good content. No, but with Dante Plowman, um, uh, listen, what she did is, is I think uh, will embolden Tennessee's fan base. And it already has. We've seen on our message board that you love it. You love her response. You love what uh, she did. Now, but let me get to the big picture. Does an NCAA investigation hurt recruiting? Caleb, what do you think I'm going to answer, given that I've covered recruiting for about a quarter of a century? Oh, I think you're going to answer no, because you know the lay of the land in college football today. Right. So, like, if you were to ask me uh, in the mid-2000s, I would have said, yeah, that's a problem. Like, Southern California could get hammered, and I would tell my kid not to go there. Nowadays, what do you have to, I mean, what could you possibly violate that actually affects your program? I don't think it can be done. So I don't think that's any major concern at all. Hit that like and subscribe button. Now you've got to do that for me. We bring more people into the program. And are you concerned about Tennessee and this NCAA investigation? According to our poll on Twitter, which please vote right now. What do you think of Don Day Plowman's Uh, fighting back against the NCAA, Uh, go get it. They're weak. Comply, 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 like back in the old days. And lastly, it has no effect. Caleb, my column was uh, essentially that Tennessee is doing something they've never done before. Will it work? I don't know. But what they did yesterday was absolutely historic. Historic. And I'm going to tell you why with Caleb Calhoun, Dave Hooker off the hook sports two minutes. Sand and salt water. The beach is a very relaxing place unless you wear contacts. Ow! Open your eyes to the best the beach has to offer with LASIK vision correction from Campbell Cunningham Laser Center. Ah. Sports Treasures in North Knoxville is one of the South's largest sports cards and memorabilia dealers featuring over 10 million sports cards from vintage to modern. Sports Treasures carries a full line of hobby boxes, singles, autographed memorabilia, Tennessee ball collectibles, fan cave decorations, and so much more. See a museum full of collectibles at Sports Treasures, 4819 North Broadway in Fountain City, and Sports Treasures on Facebook. Sports Treasures, where the real sports fan goes to shop. Have you seen the latest TriStar Hats Co. product? TriStar Hats Co., what's that? You know, those really cool hats, shirts, tumblers, and even license plates with three stars like the official Tennessee flag and stripes like the American flag. Pretty patriotic if you ask me. Ah, gotcha. Seen those. Those are cool. Where can I get them? Simple. TriStarHatsCo.com. And if you order now, there's 10% on any order $50 or more. Plus, use the promo code HOOKED. With the promo code HOOKED, you get 10% off. That's HOOKED. And don't forget free shipping with any order over 50 bucks. Stock up at TriStarHatsCo.com. That's TriStarHatsCo.com. There are plenty of wannabes out there, so make sure you go to TriStarHatsCo.com for the best quality and customer service. 
Will do. And I'll be sure to use the promo code HOOK. That's HOOKED when I do to save an additional 10% off. TristarHatsCo.com. Tristar Hats Co. is a trademark of Tristar Hats Co. LLC. Any use without express written consent is prohibited. The Dave Hooker Show, represented by Banks and Jones. Tennessee's trial attorney. Play to win. BanksJones.com. Uh, who's this guy? Hello, wizard. The Dave Hooker Show. Ooh. A presentation of Off the Hook Sports. What? YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and the free Off the Hook Sports app. Back to Dave Hooker. All right, how concerned should Tennessee fans be? We'll give you our opinion. You can take part in in the poll as well. What do you think of Dondé Plowman fighting back against the NCAA? 89% say go get it. They're weak. Uh, it has no effect. It's 9%. Comply, comply, comply like Tennessee used to. Gets 1%. So that I can clarify to everybody what I mean by that. Tennessee has always been about opening up the book, showing the NCAA what they need to see. This goes back to Doug Dickey. A lot of people would say that he was kind of the pioneer, whereas Alabama would fight the NCAA every step of the way. And you saw what happened when they had NCAA issues in the 1990s. So that has not been Tennessee's approach. So what happened yesterday was absolutely historic. Now, my question is, was it historic because Donde Plowman knows she can, with other teams colluding, beat the NCAA at any potential punishment, or was it a little bit with a signing day that is coming up? We know it's not as important as the second signing day. So as we dig into this, how concerned should Tennessee fans be in general, but how concerned should they be about recruiting? Caleb, I want to ask you that question. And it's brought to you by the Hemp House, the premier hemp dispensary online with a wide variety, great sexual selection and strict standards to ensure you only receive the best in CBD or Delta products. Hemp House chat with two T's.com. Hemp House chat with two T's.com. Use the pro- promo code hooked. It's hooked for 10% off. So concerned in general, but then particularly concerned in recruiting. I know you want to weigh in on it. Concerned overall, they shouldn't be concerned overall. They, um, guys, the NCAA has already done this. They did it to Florida State, and Florida, and they're doing it to flex their muscles. I want y'all to know this up front. After more, I, I read about this. Dave, Tennessee's fighting back on principle. They're not fighting back to save themselves. They're fighting back on principle. I agree. And- you could roll over in your tummy, or you could roll over in your back, put your hands up in the air, prone position, do what you need to do to me. Give me ten scholarship productions. You're absolutely right. It's not about what could happen. It's about, I'm about sick of this stuff. Yeah, they are fighting it back on principle because they would not, the NCAA has already said they're pretty much done with postseason bans. So they're fighting on principle. This ain't going to affect recruiting at all. This won't affect signing day. The investigation in 2022 was affecting recruiting because that was an investigation that goes back pre-NIL, meaning there was a potential postseason ban that came with that. This won't affect recruiting whatsoever and it's and quite honestly i think I, i'll give you a, I, I think this is something school should have been doing for years backing players just to give you a quick example dave one of the reasons i think georgia moved on from mark rick do you remember the todd Gurley suspension uh no actually i don't i covered him in todd Gurley. todd Gurley was uh facing suspension oh for, yeah the, uh, the autographs yeah and um basically georgia threw him to the wolves and I think there was a big concern that that was going to hurt them in recruiting. And that's why they went after Kirby Smart, too. And that's why they moved on from Mark Wait- Mark Rick. And and so, and, and by the way, this happened had, had happened before. Remember A.J. Green at Georgia with the selling the championship rings and things like that? I'm, I'm going to make the strongest statement that perhaps I've ever made in my career. This is the beginning of the end of the NCAA. So don't be worried about recruiting. I guess it could cost you a three-star that's thinking about signing on signing day, possibly the second signing day. But don't worry about it. With the transfer portal, with the class already in place, this would be just hella unfair if you did this in the old signing day calendar. Wouldn't you agree, Caleb? Oh my gosh, you did this so right before. I mean, that would be like – I would I would wonder if it was orchestrated. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, Tennessee is the school. 
that's out in front. It's Braveheart. He's getting all the troops fired up. And that's Tennessee right now. That's Donde Plowman on that horse instead of Mel Gibson going back and forth, leading the charge. And that's exactly what Tennessee is going to try to do. And it was a matter of time till this happened. And that is that is what Tennessee is trying to do. And they've already got some help in Virginia. You don't think that other schools are going to fall in line? Listen, the bottom line is, while you and I don't agree or believe that uh, Nico was just flown out to a random school like Tennessee by a collective that's based out of Tennessee, we don't believe that. But the simple fact is, how can you prove otherwise? That inten- Those intentions are in their heart. And I will tell you this, they would sign Nico too, at least if they're smart businessmen, if he came to them and said, you know, I really don't like Tennessee, but I would still like for you to represent me now and into my NFL future, which I think a lot of these collectives want to do. They want to take that agency to the next level. Um, and But I want to go to UCLA. They'd still rep him, but... This is a Tennessee collective. He was brought in to be a Tennessee guy. There's no question. Yeah, and let's also he he absolutely was. And I want to talk about why a, the bit a couple of big reasons you shouldn't be concerned. One, there's a 100 chance that no postseason ban is coming, guys. I, I repeat, there's a 100 chance that no postseason ban is coming. They don't do that anymore. Oh, and, I don't even think that. I I don't even think they'll get extended probation. But go ahead. I don't either. Let's also bring this up with who's fighting it, Dave. And I know this is maybe a little unfair because I'm one of those people that believes you shouldn't judge the characters or the backstories of the people. You should just judge the facts. I think that's one of the problems with partisan politics is people are like, well, this person's in my party. So they, it must, they must have a reason for doing what something I don't like. I don't know if, if it's bad, it's bad. If it's good, it's good. Yes. However, don't you have a little more faith in Danny White and Donde Plowman doing this than you would have Dave Hart and Jimmy Cheek? Oh, yeah. <laughs> if Dave Hart and Jimmy Cheek said the same thing, you would think there's something there, and they're just there. That thou doth protest too much would be in your mind, right? If it was those two, yes. Like when she first said it, I wondered because there's the you know, when somebody's defending themselves and they've done something wrong and they go overboard, he doth that protest too much. I believe that was, uh, I think that was Billy Shakespeare that said that. Um, that is that is what I initially thought, Caleb. I thought, uh oh, I mean, but then. When I really started to look into it, did more research, and Caleb and I were up researching until basically our 3.45 a.m. production meeting. We just went right into that. Um, I think she, this was a calculated move, and I think she knew, too. So I like the fact that she's at least somewhat ahead of the game because from a PR standpoint, let me tell you why what we did was, was so big. Uh, first, if you own a business, Apex Apparel Group, Man, they do so much. They design, brand, market your way, unique products to promote your business with unparalleled customer service. Full-on brand supply company. 15% off your first order. Logo design layouts headquartered out of Knoxville, but they're a national dealer. One-stop shop for all products, giveaways, uniforms for your business. Spirit wear. Spirit wear. Schools, groups. Call Tyler, 865-919-3001. 865-919-3001 or go to your apex apparel group.com. So while I thought she was perhaps flying off the handle, you now have Virginia jumping in. I don't believe anybody flew off the handle and credit Don Day Plowman too for having a source. Think about this for a second. Guys, this is this is the advantage you get when you're on with uh, a couple of journalists as opposed to other options. I'm not knocking other options. I'm just telling you. So Donde Plowman knew somebody well enough in the NCAA office that she got wind of this on Monday that it was going to break so that she could have that letter sent to the NCAA and then they quickly made it a part of the FOIA request. So you have a retort through FOIA, which I don't know that Tennessee's ever done. This guy's is absolutely historic. This is as historic as Tennessee playing for a national championship this year. It's just short of them winning one this year. I mean, what Tennessee is doing after 50 years of saying, we'll do everything you want, NCAA. Can we shine your shoes? What would you like for breakfast? This is get the hell out of my house. 
It is. And it's going to be, you're right, it's the first domino that's falling. And we'll get to the NCAA and what this means for them in the minute, in a minute. But um, just to talk about what this means on how concerning this should be. So where are you on the scale of one to 10, Dave? I talked to you last night and I said, I'm maybe a four. Man, I'm down to a one. I don't think there is anything to worry about. For I'm going to be, I'm going to be a bare minimum of always three if the NCAA is involved. But this is one of those situations that could change. I've been saying that for 20 years, but this could change that forever if they show to be absolutely powerless, and that very well could be the case. I agree. And also, here's the other part. This is much, much, much. Okay, so. You and I both know Greg Sankey does. Nick Saban has just retired. Greg Sankey's going to back Tennessee till the end because he needs Tennessee success for the revenue. That ten, Tennessee's one of the revenue generators for the SEC, one of the top ones, right? If the when when the when the pie goes in of, of revenue from college programs and it's spread out evenly, you can guarantee Tennessee's one of the people that's producing, not taking, in the SEC, right? Mm-hmm. And yes, yes. Greg Sankey needs them. Florida's joining in. I, I think even though they've been a laughing stock of a program, I think Greg Sinke really needs Florida too. So he's going to fight for them. Here's the other point, guys. The NCAA needs Tennessee. You don't think with jo- – I, I want to say it. Josh Heupel, Nico Iamaliava, on the precipice of being the most exciting offense to watch next year. Probably – I've told you all this for a while. I think Tennessee will be the, the most ratings gold team for the next two years in college football. You don't think the NCAA knows that too? And you think the NCAA wants to punish a ratings goal team? So me on our message board said, is this a ploy to try and take Nico out? No, I don't think it no. is. I think, I think it's a reaction to Spire sports being too loud. Frankly, I think it's as simple as that. And uh, they probably know that now uh, not to brag about paying a guy $2 million a year, but not what uh, they were, not, not what their letter last night. They still don't know it. <laughs> That they shouldn't crow? They still don't know they should be quiet. They released a letter last night uh, specifically defending Nico Iamaliava, even though there's no official statement that Nico's at the heart of this. <laughs> hey, tra- Travis is one of our very best posters. Problem is going to be it will turn into a uh, urination contest. Will the NCAA take one on the chin? What choice do they have, kids? Well, I mean, their budget's $80 million. I looked it up. Tennessee's just crossed the $200 million threshold, and they've got a bunch of friends that could help them out, the NCAA, uh, that Tennessee does. So as far as how concerned you should be, I'm always going to put it at about a three because the NCAA is on campus, and they could run across a recruiting scandal and crew, for goodness sake. So you don't ever want them on campus. But I'll argue this. I think there's a great chance that they never make it on campus, that this is stymie before it even gets rolling. And I do want to address this is in Plowman's retort to the NCAA, she said that they tried to meet with them in December. Now, I know everybody's busy, but we got these things. You may see it. Caleb's there. I'm here. We're not in the same place. We got these virtual meetings. Maybe you've heard about it. Are you telling me the NCAA can't make 30 minutes or an hour to talk about what's going on? Isn't that what you're supposed to do? So in Donde Plowman's letter, she proactively reached out to the NCAA, and they basically said, next Yes, which is further proof that they are on massively solid ground, Tennessee is, and they know they're on solid ground when they're when they're fighting back, which is why, again, by the way, to the message boards, I, I'm going to... Uh, no. It sounds, like you're ta- this, it sounds like you're Batman and Robin, by the way. To the Batcave! <laughs> there is no conspiracy against Tennessee on this. This is... We'll get to the NCAA in a second on what they're trying to do, but they want Tennessee to be good. They need Tennessee to be good. They need it over the next few years. It's crucial for the SEC and the NCAA. They wouldn't do to Tennessee. They wouldn't be any harder on Tennessee if Tennessee did what Michigan did. Okay, so. Speaking uh, of what Michigan did, this this post, uh, the NCAA is a dead man walking. They get out of hand in the SEC and Big Ten will make their own super conferences with a new TV deal. This is what Jim Harbaugh was going to have after being suspended twice. He was going to have written into his contract that he couldn't get fired for cause if he 
committed the worst NCAA violation in the world. That's how weak the NCAA is. And our posters are absolutely right. I mean, who are you betting on to step in the ring? Get in the ring, said Guns N' Roses. Who are you betting on to win a battle? The SEC and Big Ten tag team against the NCAA. Also, who is the guy who took over for Mark Emmert? Is At least Mark Emmert was a goofball. But whoever took over, remind me of his name, should be absolutely ashamed that this stuff leaks. Listen, there's a new NCAA in town. So while they have some of the same employees, the first thing you should be doing, <coughs> pardon me, is coming in and saying, listen, here is the deal. Don't talk to the media. But apparently no one thinks that's a fantastic idea. Portions of the program brought to you by City Heating and Air Conditioning. 50 years in East Tennessee, integrity matters. Don't trust a fly-by-night HVAC company to tell you you need a new unit that could cost you thousands or more. Cityheatandair.com, cityheatandair.com. So bingo, bango. That's where uh, the NCAA is right now. Am I wrong? Who is the new cat that's heading them up? That replaced uh, the former, former Massachusetts governor, Charlie Baker, is the new head of the NCAA. Oh, we'll see. That um, just seems, so. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well, uh, like to official. Again, that's, I, that's what you need. Yeah, I agree. So um, let's get to the NCAA then. Let's go ahead, because I've been trying to hold it for like this segment on what on the NCAA. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Is the NCAA, Jimmy led to it. Did the NCAA step in it? Did they step in it going at Tennessee? and deliver a death blow to themselves. Um, yes. Yeah. They stepped in it. Um, and the leak got out. They didn't have the meeting. They look absolutely stupid. We had someone ask on the message board, uh, was it a different media entity that helped, uh, out, Spire Sports get uh, more donations for their ball club. Listen, guys, it don't unless you're getting something in response, don't don't do the ball club. You're wasting your hard earned money when they're depending not on your twenty dollars a month. They're depending on a hundred thousand dollars a month from Walmart. So yes, I think the NCAA stepped in it. And Caleb, I don't believe as much as you do that there are certain programs the NCAA looks out for, but if they are. Tennessee's one that you clearly would, and now they've really made Tennessee mad. I think that what happened this week may be irreversible. I don't know that if right now the NCAA called Don Day Plowman and the guys that are suing them from Tennessee and Virginia and said, uh, my bad, that's on me, oops. I don't know that it's reversible because why do you want that governing body anymore anyway? I mean, why do you want them around? You've you've got enough governing bodies in Greg Sankey and the SEC and the Big Ten that's governing them. Why do you need this one? So if I'm Donde Plowman, this is like a instead of a down thing, this is a big door of opportunity that swung open to get rid of these bunch of knuckleheads. So with the Tennessee investigation and in, with the NCAA investigation into Tennessee, I agree. They totally stepped in it. And I'm gonna tell you what happened. They came at Florida State a while back for a similar thing. Here's what's happening, guys. The NCAA is trying to flex their muscles in a post-NIL world to let people know they're still relevant. We both agree that's what's happening, right, Dave? They're trying to flex their muscles in a post-NIL world. Well, yeah, I guess if I took over a company and they were the laughing stock of the nation, I would try to do something to make myself look competent. But this wouldn't have been it. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll get, I'll, so here's where I'm going with this. So it's similar to, guy, to like... Yeah, institutions all the time take they try to take what they would think would be inconsequential steps to at least flex their muscles and keep their relevancy and maintain their uh, institutional power they went at florida state to do this a few months ago and florida state did what you talked about florida state rolled over on their back and said ah just give us a slap on the wrist and they gave him a slap on the wrist and called it a day i think they were trying to do the same thing to tennessee and they thought they would get tennessee to roll over on their back slap on the wrist just as a reminder guys we're the ncaa we're still here and then the and then Tennessee said, "F no, you're not." <laughs> like and so and so I agree. I think they stepped in it, and I'm gonna. So, uh, but can they? Let me ask you this: You think they stepped in it? Can they go back? 
no, they can't go back. And here's the problem. I think now you've given an opportunity. You've dropped your left hand. The right hook's in. And now Donde Plowman can go body blow and knock you out of this thing. Put it this way. They got on an airplane with a broken wing and they're already in the air. That thing's collapsing. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. Or, that, or mean, that door that just shoots off that one Boeing, however that works. Apparently, there's a door that'll just shoot off a Boeing. That would be bad. Um, I don't know that in five years we're going to have an NCAA. Um, I, mean, I, I mean. Yeah, I, no, I, I, look. Here, here's here, let me Let me defend. I'm actually going to defend the people working at the NCAA for a minute. Oh and this is going to be funny. No, 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 no. Okay, hold on. Just hear me out, guys. They are in an impossible position of trying to stay relevant amidst a bunch of Supreme Court rulings that has taken total power away from them. Now, you could say, Dave, that they should have gotten out in front of NIL. And I think you might agree. You, I think we would agree, right? I think they're, they're original. We talk about original sin on this show, not from a religious perspective. But the NCAA's original sin, would you not agree, was <laughs> not getting out in front of NIL? before the Supreme Court ruled on it? Oh, yeah. That was their, no question. Yeah, that was their original sin. This has been a long-term process, though, since the Supreme Court ruling against them in the 80s that took away their power to negotiate TV deals. Okay, that's what really happened. And now, this is where this has all been going. Charlie Baker, I'm not here to cast aspersions on him, whatever. He took over an unsalvageable organization. At this point, this is like taking over that business that is you you, you ever watch you ever watch those uh food network shows uh with Chef Ramsey or um oh the other guy that where they go and try to save restaurants that are failing and you look it up and they are always the restaurants always fail anyway because if if you take over a failing restaurant, Dave, you know this by the time you try to take it over and save it, it's so down knee deep in the woods that it's unsalvageable. Yeah. And and the people running the NCAA, the, the institution is unsalvageable now. And so they're doing whatever they can. Can I tell you a quick story about David Cutcliffe? Um, So we interviewed him about the Todd Helton interview. And I talked to guys before and after um, off the air. By the way, he says, you got you a good one there. Talking about Josh Heupel. And David Cutcliffe wouldn't say that unless he really meant it, especially when it was uh, off off camera. But he he said to me, I'm preparing this – this whole program about how you can fix the calendar and I'm presenting it to the athletic directors. Why is that not what the NCAA was doing instead of looking into Tennessee for the second time in a year? When the thing that sticks out to me the most is eight months ago, Tennessee was considered an exemplary program and working with the NCAA. And now there's an investigation going on and they're saying it could be major. Why couldn't they have been working on ways to make the calendar better, on ways to make NIO more trackable, on a potential union, then you could put a salary cap? Why aren't they ahead of that? Instead of being down the road in their decision-making, they're like at the exit you passed 30 miles ago. That's exactly what they are. You're right. But, well, I'll tell you why they're not ahead of the curve on a lot of these things. Now, you're right with the calendar. There are some things the NCAA could do to keep its authority. For instance, coaches would beg for the NCAA to put a more strict recruiting calendar on, wouldn't they? So they don't have to work as hard. They would love that. Yes, coaches are actually being taken advantage of. And I don't care if they're – the assistant coaches that are making two, dollars $300,000 are trying to get in the NFL, and they're probably questioning whether or not they should have been a coach at all. And everybody agrees with us. I want you to finish your point. But <clears throat> you look at this, and – The message board, Evan, says this is going to be an ESPN documentary. I think it's that big and that historic. Uh, NCAA will be the old Division II. And I was going to ask, is the NCAA even going to be around in three to five years? Goes to Johnny Major, says may not have an NCAA in five months, Dave. That is a little quicker than I would think. But I would be – my son's 19 – I w- would not be surprised if by the time he's of legal drinking age that there is no NCAA and the Big Ten and SEC step in and govern football. I wouldn't be surprised at all. I wouldn't be surprised at all either on that. And here's the big point to break out on this. Now, I don't know how the NCAA will handle this or things like that. Here's the catch. We talked about this yesterday. This is why football players can't unionize, and this is why the NCAA's hands are tied. 
every, there's Title IX. Every single school, um, every single school, for the most part, football subsidizes every other sport, right? Yes. Um, so um, what I would say is that I think the NCAA – that one of their one of the ways they're involved is that they kind of help keep these other sports subsidized. I think that's the one thing that could stand in the way of the Big Ten and the SEC breaking off to form their own football league because they can't. Tennessee and I mean the Big Ten and the SEC can break off, but they're still colleges. They're still subject to federal law, independent of the NCAA, and you really can't unionize athletes on that point because if you unionize athletes. That's for those who don't know, college sports is inherently socialism. Okay. And we we call out women's sports. It's not just the women's sports. You know, there's like water polo teams and lacrosse teams where all those kids are on free scholarship because of the work the football players are doing to generate all that revenue. Okay. And that's all protected under federal law. So it doesn't matter if they break off from the NCAA, that's still not changing. What I don't get is because of that fact, it's so stupid to try to regulate NIL if you're the NCAA because NIL is the one avenue where football players and basketball players can get what they deserve, which is way more money than any other athlete on campus. And so I, I, I just think that I, I think that the NCAA tried to regulate and focus on the wrong thing. They should they should have been trying to focus on how we can distribute revenue more evenly, evenly. in an era, by the way, David, you know this. They really stepped in it because we're in an era where college sports is about to explode and take off in revenue, right? And yes. they could Yeah. They could have gotten out front and said, okay, let's use this revenue to prop up other sports, other women's sports that we care about. We here we care about all they could have you they could have focused on that. Instead, they said, let's focus on making sure players aren't getting too much NIL money. And by the way, this is why they went to Congress to begin with. I don't care what anybody says. The only reason there's regulation being proposed in Congress is People in Washington and corporations and lobbyists are are working together to see how can we get a p bigger piece of the pie that the players have earned. That's what they want. In 30 seconds, I'm going to tell you how bad this is. It's as bad as one of the greatest wrongs in our country in recent history. It, it ranks right up there and is analogous with denying people the ability to vote represented by Banks and Jones. Banks and Jones? Well, it's because they're Tennessee's trial attorney. You can play to win with Banks and Jones because they'll go to trial. You've heard of other lawyers. They say they'll go to trial and fight for you. They won't. They just want to settle. That's the easiest way out. Well, that's not Banks and Jones, led by T. Scott Jones. They won't settle. They'll go to trial for you. Tennessee's trial attorney. They play to win. Truly, Tennessee's trial attorney when it comes to criminal defense or personal injury. Why settle? It's Banks and Jones. T. Scott Jones. Banksandjones.com. If the NCAA was Congress, they'd be arguing whether or not suffrage was the right thing or not, instead of being worried about AI and what it could do to our country. They are literally 100 years behind what they should be. I mean, this is like arguing uh, whether or not there should be taxation from England before the United States broke off. This is synonymous with that because you're arguing a rule. Now, listen, if you broke a rule back then, I don't have a problem with you being held accountable for that. But to say that it's some major violation is pretty idiotic. And I'll ask you this, Caleb. Did Tennessee make themselves a target by publicly talking about the $2 million reportedly that's going to Nico Iamaleava. Yeah, they yeah. made themselves a target. But um, remember that that came out in February of 2022 before the NCAA regulated NIL and Spire Sports wanted to get out of the ahead of the curve so they could get, let's call it what it is, they wanted to secure. I think Tennessee did that because they wanted to one, make a public statement on recruiting on look at what you can get if you sign with Tennessee. And I also think that they wanted to say to people who might donate to NIL, Hey, look, if you support us, look at what we'll do. We can get you a five-star quarterback. I'm and telling you, this is the beginning of the end of the NCAA. We will look back on this and we will say Tennessee 
was a pioneer because Caleb, I'm going to, I'm going to put on you. You have to argue the NCAA side. You tell me how your stance in going after young men that are earning their hard earned dollar because of the talents that they've worked on. You tell me how that's wrong, please. Okay, I'm, I'm going to open it up to you. So for those of you who don't know, um, there is a, there is a, um, what they will argue is something that corporations used to argue in the progressive era at the turn of the 20th century against with Teddy Roosevelt, which is something called substantive due process. And substantive due process basically says this. And the Supreme Court, which was heavily business friendly at that time, always sided with big business. That's why in the 30s, Franklin Roosevelt tried to pack the court to support his New Deal legislation and support the workers in the time. The substantive, the substantive due process argument is this. If you enter into a contract with me, I, if you're pretend you pretend I'm an employee, Dave, and I work for you. Okay. Yes. You and do. you change, you change rules on me. You change my pay every day. You change my pay. You change my rules. And maybe there was no contract I signed. And I finally sue you for just employee abuse. Okay. Of some sort. Substantive due process. Is, did, I would appreciate it if you didn't do that. I would not do that. Cause you don't, Dave does not abuse me guys. He's actually a very good employer. Um, and, and I know lawyers like T Scott Jones that work for free, but anyway, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Substantive due process basically says contract law is implied in the Constitution. They would sit there and say, Ten we can retroactively change rules on Tennessee, and it's implied that they have to comply with us on that because they have agreed to be a member school of us, so we can do what we want with them. Agreed. That's Agreed. what they're going to say. The ghost of Johnny Major said, I'll be your attorney, Caleb. Are you uh, an attorney? I would attorney? love Johnny Major's arguing for me in court, man. That'd be great. I'll tell you something. Uh, Caleb's done nothing wrong. He's an innocent man. He, you ought to love him. And if you don't love him, consider him a great human being. Uh, if the glove fits, you must have quit. Um, Jan says, if there is going to be a salary cap, then there has to be a players association. I, yeah, yes. I'm aware of that, Jan. But why wasn't the NCAA trying to make that happen? where we could govern this thing because that's the first step to ever well, you can't have that you can't have a player what i was you can't have a players association because that's money going directly to the players you can't have the school revenue go to the players because the schools need that money to subsidize other sports so you, you it has to be it, the only source of revenue you can okay, allow but, players to have is nil okay but again you're getting caught up with dogma old dogma okay so no there's still title nine no, no no hold on it's it's eventually going to go through the schools and, why, and, and you're telling me that with, with Title IX, they're not going to flex that a little bit. So, listen, the, the women don't get equal stuff. They don't. Let's quit kidding ourselves. They do not get equal stuff. So, are they going to get equal stuff just because it's NIL? No. If it's funneled through the university, they're going to find a way around that. I, I see what you're saying, but... And I'm not even, I don't think there should be a salary cap. Let's be real clear. So I'm kind of arguing a point that I don't believe in. Uh, and I don't believe there should be a union. Um, so I believe Tennessee, again, is at the forefront of this thing. I thought the letter at first struck me as what the H is going on. And then before I know it, I'm like, this makes a lot of sense. And you now have Virginia uh, and Tennessee that's getting involved with a, if uh, with a lawsuit, but I will tell you this one thing that is uh, underestimated is the fact that Dante Plowman was so tied in. I don't think they've ever had an athletic director that knew. You mean that, a chancellor? Or ch chancellor, I'm sorry. Chancellor that knew this was coming down the pike. So she made goody goody friends at Indianapolis, in Indianapolis for those hearings during Jeremy Pruitt. And I will say this till the day I die. I believe Jeremy Pruitt got a couple of phone numbers at Indianapolis and said, I'm going to call you after this thing's over because there are some things you need to know. No, uh, I, I believe so too, probably. Travis now says, if the NCAA told you, you can only pay Coop $500 a year, would that be right? No, I'm not for any of that. Let me be real clear. I'm, I'm free market capitalist. Well, and the NCAA can't. 
They, they, they would never be allowed to. And this is the point. You can't put a cap on NIL. But at least, they, I, but my, Caleb, but my point is, I'm sorry, I don't want to get caught up, too caught up. But my point is, at least they'd be trying to do something innovative and different instead of enforce a rule that's four years old. No, I agree. What they sh what they should be doing is not worrying about the where the money goes at all. What they should be doing is worrying about recruiting calendars. What they should be doing is worrying about a way to, how about this, a way to properly organize college sports so you don't have this realignment where the SEC and Big Ten have 34 teams. They should be trying to figure all of this out. And instead, they're fighting a battle that they lost four years ago. And they, they can't accept that they lost it. The and NCAA, let, let's think about this. The NCAA has an $80 million budget. Tennessee has a $200 million budget. Are you telling me that if Greg Sankey gets the chancellors and athletic directors on the phone who are meeting next week, athletic directors meet next week. I don't know if you know that. It's the, it's the annual AD meeting. Are you telling me that if Greg Sankey says, listen, everybody, I think we can do our own thing but I'm going to need everybody to pony up $5 million. So how many teams are there now in the SEC with Texas and Oklahoma? 18? 16. 16. 16, 16 excuse me. Okay. $5 million. That would be roughly, if you would like to do the math, about $80 million. That's as much as the entire NCAA budget. How are they going to fight that in court? Get no, to they're not going to fight it. I don't that care. Is why, by the way, that's... I mean, I don't care what you want to throw out there. I don't care if they have to ride bicycles to school uh, to practice. You can win anything when you've got that much more money to spend on lawyers than the other dudes do. Which is exactly why the NCAA ran to Congress for help. Oh, exactly. amen, amen. That's what they they ran to Congress, and what you know that that bill that Joe Manchin and Tommy Tuberville proposed. Joe Manchin and Tommy Tuberville had donors from NIL collectives and donors from schools that weren't in there that were like, hey, we want a piece of this pie. It, put it this way. That bill, I'll tell you what that bill is about, Dave. I'll tell you exactly what it's about. And what it's bill? About, Just so everybody knows what bill you're talking about. There was a NIL bill to regulate it. There was a bill in Congress to regulate NIL and the transfer portal. By the way, I think the NCAA could fix the transfer portal pretty easily. That's something they could work on. That they wouldn't get sued for, but there was a bill to regulate the NIL and the transfer portal. I'm telling you guys right now, the reason that 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 was in there is because there are a lot of corporations, you know this, Dave, a lot of donors who donate to their schools and because they want to see their schools be successful. However, they don't want to get into an arms race with other donors at other schools, right? Where they might have to dip into their pockets more than they want. Great. They want a Congress to step in to save them from themselves, so they wouldn't have to yeah. donate so much money. To yeah. help their school, uh, which is go. Hmm? go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So they wouldn't have. They want a Congress to step in and save them from their cells, so they wouldn't have to spend as much money on players. It was nothing more than a charade. And, and by the way, they were funding the campaigns of Joe Manchin and Tommy Tuberville, so they could do that. It was nothing more than a charade for them to get the money back in their pockets rather than the university player, the players' pockets. Oh, under four and a half years mega conference after what we heard and trust me it's changed my mind i ask you that question caleb brought to you by rick terry jewelry design they want to be your jeweler looking for a game affordable game day jewelry how about the fire opals a tennessee tradition rick terry jewelry.com rick terry jewelry.com please support our sponsors that's why we're here and we love some rick terry so i'm putting the over under at heading into this would be season 2024 so heading into 2029 there will be a mega super conference that is bigger than the ncaa or not you have to bet a year's worth of mortgage payments i'll bet i'm still gonna bet under i mean over okay. i'm over excuse me it's gonna be after okay. that because the the reason is before you give your take is um espn is about to do a 10-year college football playoff deal and they can't they gotta wait till that deal expires with espn before they do anything Okay. Uh, I I would have agreed, agreed with you about 36 hours ago. Now, I think it's less. I think this gets things, gets things moving. And I look back at Greg Sankey and how almost apathetic he was about when Congress would actually step in and make some moves as far as what you were referring to and try to limit uh, NIL and he said well I don't know about this year you got the midterm elections I don't know about 2024 you got the real elections so he's not expecting it to happen anything anytime fast on their end so that tells me that Congress isn't very motivated that tells me you could get something done 
break apart. Now, they are still publicly funded institutions, so I'm not saying it's easy, but there are hurdles to jump through, and they can certainly make it happen. Tennessee's basketball team wasn't great last night. My goodness. Uh, two minutes with Caleb Calhoun. I'm Dave Hooker off the hook. Sports Dalton Connect. Too much? Maybe? Stay tuned. Got cataracts? We can fix that. Never miss another moment. With a little help from Drs. Campbell, Cunningham, Taylor, and Hahn at cctis.com. Hi, I'm Rick Terry, and we at Rick Terry Jewelry Designs pride ourselves in the highest quality craftsmanship from a family-owned business here in Knoxville for over 35 years. At Rick Terry Jewelry Designs, we also take pride in being an affordable option for all your game day accessories, especially those fire opals. At Rick Terry Jewelry Designs, we want to be your jeweler every day and especially on game day. Go Vols! Hi, Mike Davis here with City Heating and Air, reminding you to always dare to compare. Our team provides quality local heating and air service, installation, and maintenance across East Tennessee. We use only the best equipment like American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning for your residential, new construction, or commercial needs. Honesty, dependability, and customer satisfaction have been the cornerstones of our business since 1961. City Heat and Air. There's your man. We believe every day is a good day to be thirsty. With free samples on draft and lots of flavors to choose from, Tennessee Cider Company prepares a hard cider that's easy to enjoy. Some say it's the signature cider of the South. Others say it's the cure to your craving. They all say you'll savor every sip. The area of Gatlinburg has so much to offer, and so does Tennessee Cider Company. Add us to your list for shopping and fun experiences. You'll be glad you made the trip. Find our cidery in the Mountain Mall on the Gatlinburg Parkway. Sip smart. Sip the good stuff. Sip Tennessee Cider Company. Thirsty yet? Doors open at 10 a.m. Hey, I'm your huckleberry. Say wham. What's up, everybody? This is Jacob Warren asking you to like, subscribe, and share. Dave needs this. Today's tough four downs. I'm just having a bad day with the buttons. Here we go. The Dave Hooker Show, represented by Banks and Jones, Tennessee's trial attorney. Play to win, banksjones.com. Um, who's this guy? Hello, wizard. The Dave Hooker Show, Ooh. a presentation of Off the Hook Sports. What? YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and the free Off the Hook Sports app. Back to Dave Hooker. Stay in ball history. Do you feel a little bit bad for Nico getting caught in the middle of all this? I do. I he's, still, he's still a 19-year-old man or young man. True, but I think Nico's about to be loaded with support from a bunch of people. So, I mean, I you know, it, it's nobody really felt bad when Reggie uh, Reggie Bush was blackballing, was 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 being mistreated. So it's well, Lord you know, Almighty, you talk about apples and oranges. Those were two way different things. No, I agree. I agree. Um, but, uh, I just think that players getting involved are always, um, are players getting involved are always, I always feel bad about it because like, again, Reggie Bush, like, okay, they paid for a house or Derek Rose. What was it? Derek Rose. Like this, for those who don't remember Derek Rose at university of Memphis, like he was cleared by the NCAA to play, even though we all know he cheated to have somebody take his SAT. He was cleared by the NCAA to play. And then the NCAA comes back and is like, Oh, well, uh, we, we, we mishandled our investigation. So, um, you're, uh, not, you aren't clear. So you're no longer eligible. So we're going to forfeit all the wins. Dave, I got a question. Should the, looking back at forfeiting wins in games, shouldn't you, if you were a fan and you spent money to go to a game and the NCAA declares that game hasn't happened, shouldn't the NCAA refund you? My bank statement sure as heck shows it happened. If I paid money to go to the game. That's a fair <laughs> point. I mean, we don't even look at them. I still don't factor them in. If I say like uh, Tennessee's, you know, I had like a whatever it was, nine game win streak in the 90s over Alabama. Well, one of those technically was vacated, but I still count it. So no, I don't have a problem. Uh, let's be careful on the message board, guys. We don't want to get into politics. I, I, let's, 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 let's keep that uh, clean. I want to I want to get your input on this. And when we get off topic, it just flies around and I can't see. And I think you guys are a big, big part of the program. So uh, work with me 
on that. I appreciate it. Are you worried at all? It's on our YouTube page. You can vote. Wow. As one-sided as we have ever seen. Uh, what do you think of Don Day Plowman fighting back against the NCAA? 90%. Yes, comply, comply, comply. 2% uh, gets comply, comply, comply. It has no effect. 9%. Now, I will say this. Um, you, uh, there certainly is. Uh, oh, by the way, Nico liked every single post supporting Dante Plowman on social media. He's watching this very closely, but not from the shadows. Uh, I feel like he believes UT is on the up and up. Well, I'm, I'm sure he does and certainly hope so with the time he's invested in this uh, college football program. So uh, t- Tennessee is, um, let's do look at, for fairness to say, let's look at what could happen worst case scenario. Uh, they go to, all's good, Derek. They go to court and they lose, which I don't think is going to happen. And you don't think it's going to happen. Will will a fan base in this case, Tennessee, will a fan base say, why didn't somebody else go take the bullet? Why didn't somebody else try to take that leadership role? Like in Alabama or Georgia, who's been the preeminent programs of the past 20 or so years. Why didn't they do it? Why does Tennessee have to be the one? that could take a a, a shot to the gut. Um, I could see that argument, Caleb. I don't think Tennessee's going to lose or any other school is going to lose in court, but I could definitely see that argument from Tennessee's perspective, especially when they're trying to overcome. I don't think Tennessee, and look, this is, people are going to want to hear this, but Tennessee's not going to generate much sympathy on that because Tennessee, Tennessee's been teacher's pet with the NCAA for 50 years, like you said. So no one's going to, you know, no one's going to feel bad for them taking the bullet now alone, because let, let's just be honest. It, it, we all know that Philip Fulmer redirected the NCAA to Alabama in 2000. Now, context matters. Fulmer wasn't the only one who complained about Alabama during that time. You know that, Dave. Steve Spurrier yes. was complaining about Alabama for years and what Logan Young was doing. And so, but... You talk about it all the time. Tennessee was very big in compliance. Part of Tennessee's compliance has been turning in other programs for cheating. Oh, so- I think that's overplayed. I do. I think Philip Fulmer had an ax to grind with Alabama. Uh, I've read the whole, every, the FOIA that he basically called Roy Adams every name in the book, questioned his sexuality on and on and on. But he didn't call out other schools. I think... I, I mean, I'm not saying Tennessee's never turned he anybody. He secretly in. recorded the Tresvin coach admitting that Albert Means was paid. Well, no, but that was a that was a personal uh, axe to grind with Alabama. Is what I said. I oh, don't, I I don't think they're coaches. turning people in left and right. I, I I mean, maybe maybe they are secretly, but what you're supposed to do is you're call you're supposed to call Greg Sankey. That's the way this thing's supposed to work. You call him first before the NCAA gets involved. I don't think. I, I don't think a lot of people are calling the NCAA reporting other people. Now, they might report that to their conference. This was a totally different situation. Okay, but it's not just – Tennessee didn't just turn in Alabama in 99. Then they hired Bruce Pearl in 2005. And as you know, Dave, Bruce Pearl ratted out another coach. Oh, don't don't make that. That's – he did that before Tennessee. Tennessee Tennessee has not been opposed to working against other schools – in the past, in their compliance with the NCAA. Okay. We're, we're, we're going to see this differently. I think it was an axe to grind with Albert Means. I think Bruce Pearl made a mistake in that he recorded uh, that young man, that, and that hurt his career. But I do think he was right, uh, but it wasn't probably the right thing to do. If we can uh, get uh, this day in ball sports history, it'll be brought yep, to you I by got it. Sports Treasures, carrying over 5 million sports treasures and so much more. Follow on Facebook. Do me that favor. Follow on Facebook. Go to Sports Treasures TN. They had an awesome Hendon Hooker helmet that was out. It's just so, so cool. So sign up for the daily updates. I share them on Off the Hook Sports every time I see them. Sports Treasures, North, North Knoxville. You can pick up the Celebrate 98 book, the 19. 19- 98 National Championship Team. Untold stories behind that team. It is available right below, but you can pick it up 
at Sports Treasures as well. So this day in Tennessee sports history, before we get to a basketball team that suddenly had a boop, little blip in the radar. What do you got? So that does involve Tennessee basketball, and it actually involves Bruce Pearl. Um, 13 years ago today, the 2009-2010 Tennessee team, the only Elite Eight team in Tennessee history, the one that saw Tyler Smith get kicked off the team in the middle of the season for the gun charges, and then they went and upset Kansas a few days later. Um, hidden in that is another very underrated win they had later in the year, which was Billy Donovan in Florida bring their team into Knoxville. And in a dogfight, Chandler Parsons hits a three with 30 seconds to go to put Florida up 60-59. to 59. Scotty Hobson responds with a mid-range jumper with 17 seconds to go to give Tennessee a 61 to 60 win at home against Florida. At the time, Tennessee had won. This marks Tennessee's, I believe, sixth straight win against the Gators in basketball. Bruce Pearl at the point had won nine of 10 against Florida to that point, including three of four during the Billy Donovan dynasty of the two, two, two national titles. Bruce Pearl oddly owned Billy Donovan, and, and no one could explain it. Yep. Okay. Uh, he certainly did. Brought to you by Sports Treasures. Uh, check check them out. Sports Treasures on Facebook. Uh, follow them. Uh, Sports Treasures TN. Sports Treasures TN. Let's talk some Tennessee hoops. And that's brought to you by our friends at Dynasty Pools and Spas. We will... Jump in the hot tub for Four Downs, brought to you by Dynasty Pools and Spas. Four Downs, brought to you by Dynasty Spas, the most comfortable spas made in the United States of America, right here in East Tennessee. Drop in for the all-new showroom in Athens, Dynasty Spas, perfect for all four seasons. Four Downs, presented by Off the Hook Sports. Do me a favor, take one second, hit that like and subscribe button. Take note of our sponsors below. That's why we're here. We appreciate that. It is time for first down. Coop, what should people do? Cooper Mays here. Hit like and subscribe. Coop here. First down. All right. First question I have for Caleb Calhoun is he's going to be on the witness stand today. This is a bad loss for Tennessee, but how bad? It is a postseason tournament. We've seen teams respond either way. From games like this, they get better, they come together, or they suddenly have a bit of a uh, complex, and maybe it dings their confidence. Uh, where does Tennessee go after this loss, and how bad of a loss is it? It's a bad loss, but because of how they lost is why it's a bad loss. You can survive a random regular season loss. I want to give Lamont Paris, the South Carolina coach, a shout-out. Part of the win yesterday was South Carolina. If you've ever seen Barnes' team defense and what they do, Lamont Paris realized that if you make the extra pass, the corner three is always open. Yep. And he schemed for that, prepared for it. They hit every corner three. South Carolina picked last to finish in the picked to finish last in the SEC. Is now 18 and three, six and two in a road win at Tennessee. They're a good team, but it's a bad loss because Tennessee, we all thought Tennessee was past the days of just absolute horrid offensive games under Rick Barnes. Long scoring droughts. Okay, and I'm going to lead you into all, all that. So but you think it's a, a bad, bad loss. I think it's a blip in the radar. I, I understand what you're saying about how they lost, and I want to get into that. What down, Coop? Cooper Mays here. Second down. Okay, so uh, were the Vols too reliant on Dalton Connect? No, it wasn't that they were too reliant on Dalton Connect. It was that Jonas Adu didn't show up. I've told you guys the whole time this team goes as Jonas Adu goes. You did. Jonas Adu gotten... You, you yeah. did. And, and, and by the way, guys, when Dalton Connect was emerging onto the scene, Caleb wrote that about Adu, and I thought, Caleb, uh, maybe a little off here, because to me it's Connect this is the story. But you're right. Um, if you don't have that supporting cast, Dalton Connect can go off for 45, and you're not necessarily going to win. Put it this way. Guys, I'll, I'll just give you an example. The Michael Jordan Bulls. When Michael Jordan was dropping 63 and 50 points a game and losing to the Celtics in the playoffs. It wasn't until the Bulls got an interior presence in Horace Grant that they were winning championships. The Bulls went as their inside game. Even though Michael Jordan was the most important player on the team, they only won when they had a strong interior presence, whether that be Horace Grant or Dennis Rodman. Or something that like Tony just Kukos. happened. Caleb Calhoun compared Dalton Connect to Michael Jordan. I'm your huckleberry. <laughs> ah, whoa. I'm saying, but relatively, like no matter what Dalton yeah. Connect does... He's got yeah. to have inside help. And Tennessee, 
Tennessee, this team goes as Adu does for one reason. Don Connect's going to score no matter what. They got to shoot well from three. They were horrendous from three last night, going five of 21. Why was that? Because Adu was useless under the basket. And if you don't, we saw this last year with Uras Plavchik, guys. If you are not an offensive threat underneath the basket, you will not have the open looks from the three-point line. And that is a problem. Adu was horrible last night. I give... 90% 90% of this loss on, on Adu. I put 90% of this loss on Adu. Okay. He cannot do it all by himself. I saw you there, Travis. Uh, third down, Coop. That's Yeah, that is crazy. Easy, Tracy Morgan. Uh, third down brought to you by Dynasty Pools and Spas. Remember, if you mention the Off the Hook Sports, you get $500 off a spa that may already be discounted because of first responders, military, and also slightly blemished models. They're in Athens, and they'll deliver to you. Everything is included. That means the chemicals. That means the cover, the steps, the whole nine yards. They'll deliver to you. You'll absolutely love it. Dynasty Pools and Spas, great selection, great prices. Uh, mention Off the Hook Sports. We would greatly Appreciate that. Cooper, are you on third down? Tennessee Center, Cooper Mays here. Third down. All right. So what did you learn about this basketball team in a loss that you did not know? Give me something because I know you know a lot, Caleb, but give me something. That they still don't have the front court depth they wanted. I thought they found it with J.P. Estrella. They didn't. They didn't. Adu got in foul trouble. Toby Awaka came out. He was okay. J.P. Estrella was only out there for four minutes. And if Barnes wants this team to go far, he's got to get his other guys playing more minutes. I, there were just not enough minutes. There were not enough people logging double-digit minutes in this game and too, in this on this team and too many people logging 30 minutes or more. And so the big thing I learned was that Tennessee's front court depth, Ron Slay said it three weeks ago on our show. I kind of pushed back because I saw J.P. Estrella emerge right after that. Well, Adu was horrible last night and was in foul trouble, and Barnes still wouldn't put Estrella in. And I'm going to get people are going to say he should put Estrella in. Dave, you covered enough teams in football and basketball. If a player is not being put in, it's usually because of the player, not the coach, right? Typically. Um, uh, typically. Uh, what down, Coop? All SEC center, Cooper Mays here. Fourth down. Thank you, Coop. Uh, four downs brought to you by Dynasty Pools and Spas. Does this change your projection for Tennessee basketball because of what South Carolina was able to reveal about the Vols, especially that corner three? I asked Caleb that 60 seconds, Dynasty Pools and Spas. Having the best spas made right here in the United States of America in your backyard dynasty pools and spas their showroom is open in athens right off the interstate you can stop by and check out the best hot tubs and spas in the market and delivery yes they can do that to knoxville or chattanooga they've got complete support spa cover and chemicals to keep your spa bubbling at its best they also have pool chemicals as well dynasty pools and spas amazing discounts for first responders military and even some blemish models that could save you a ton and no one will ever notice mention off the hook sports get 500 dollars off mention off the hook sports get 500 dollars off dynasty pools and spas go to dynasty pools and spas.com or stop by that showroom in athens dynasty pools and spas.com dynasty pools and spas all right, so Caleb, just change your projection at all for Tennessee basketball. I have them as an elite eight team. I'm not ready to go final four because of Barnes history, but I think they're better than a sweet 16 team. Does this change what you saw? Any deficiency that you're like, uh, I think I'm going to drop them down a little bit. Yes. And it's Ouch. because of their. Yes, and it's because I thought that they were going to find a ninth or 10th guy. Guys, this team has no depth. This team has no depth. And on the second night in a tournament, on the second game of a weekend, that's going to expose themselves. So this team has no depth. I want to give SE South guy a shout-out. He kept saying, he's been telling us all weekend, we just haven't been paying attention on the message board that South Carolina has an underrated defense and oh, is a really good team. Yeah. No, I, and, th- I, I thought Tennessee came in. Uh, sorry, South Carolina came in very, very underrated. I I, I did think we didn't have a chance to talk much basketball because of all that's been going on. But I, I thought this was a great opportunity for a donut game that they would get beat in. I I thought this would be very tight. I think, uh, you know, I covered Lamont Paris for a while at UTC, so I know him. And I thought that uh, – I thought Tennessee would have a challenge on their hands, and they did. 
He basically, Lamont Paris, made a gamble. And SC Scout guy pointed this out earlier, and he's right. One, the corner three I told you. He also said, and this is what I told you. He said he did exactly what this is why I brought up Dalton Connect with Michael Jordan with your Celtics in the 85 series with Bird and McHale. What'd they say, Dave? They said, We'll let Michael Jordan get his points. We're just gonna make sure no one else scores. Lamont Paris basically said, We'll let Dalton Connect get his. We're not letting yeah. anybody else get theirs. And to point and, out, he had that 60 points against Larry Bird where he made him look very stupid. Double crossover. You remember the fadeaway pass? Yeah. They lost that game. The Bulls lost that game. Yeah, because but the Celtics remember, didn't care. But you don't remember it like that. You're like, oh, he scored 60 points in the garden. Well, they lost. They so lost. As, as much as I like Connect to be able to take over a game, it doesn't mean – that everybody else can just take a night off if he's scoring Andy Mason Real Estate.com. Four decades, a combined experience in East Tennessee, best prices, best service in the Knoxville area. Andy Mason Real Estate.com. Andy Mason Real Estate.com. You said you got a hot one for me. So, uh, what do you yeah, got? I'm ready. All right. So, um, by the way, SC Sell has another great point where he said Tennessee, whenever they're number five and they play South Carolina, they give up 63 points. But <laughs> hey guys, I'm not uh, I'm not kissing up to be nice, but seriously, I've I've done some sort of broadcasting with feedback, be it callers or emails. We actually have like the smartest community that if you're listening for the first time and be a, a part of a smart community where you learn stuff day in and day out, hit the like and subscribe button because these guys are fantastic. So what's your uh super hot take? Well, I want to know what your thoughts are on this, Dave. Again, Don De Plama was cheered at halftime of the game last night, standing ovation. We all know what was going on your city. It was throughout all of Knoxville. Do you think the distraction of the NCAA investigation could have had an impact on the players being lethargic last night? That's hot. No doubt. You think it did? Yeah, you no doubt. I mean, you, because you're asking, you're, you're asking, why is it? I mean, let's face it. A lot of them don't know who Don Day Plowman is, probably. So you're like, mm -hmm. why is everybody cheering the older lady? And oh, they probably <laughs> learned before the game tipped off last night, though. That thing was trending everywhere. By the time the yeah, game yeah. Off, they, maybe they, they did, it. but their two hours are usually cell phoneless before the game. I, I'm not that saying they came, did her statement came out at like two. Yeah, I'm not saying they did or didn't, but you do. You wonder if something like that's a distraction, um, because at the very least, you would wonder, you know, like if you're one of those four year players. I'm not talking about the connects of the world, man. If Tennessee's in NCAA problems, what does that mean for me? No cafeteria on Sundays. I mean. So, yeah, I mean, I think that it's natural for that to be a distraction. I don't think that's nearly as much of a reach as I thought you were uh, going to give me. Uh, some of those, Peyton Manning thinks this. They're like, that is total bullshit. But instead. That's hot. All right. Yeah, I think it was. No, I think it was a very big distraction. And I've kind of thought this um, going in. Now, that's not the, South Carolina's defense was superb. Again, Lamont Paris coached a superb game yesterday. But that bad, the, the, the telling stat, Dave. 12 of 20 from the free throw line. That's that's the one that stands out. And okay. So... Derek said something that Rick Barnes teams have always had random bad shooting nights since Texas. He's been, he's known for this. It's why I never got excited about Tennessee basketball since he's been there. I agree with that, but I thought Dalton connect would be the guy that could get you out of a scoring drought. And I still think he can, but there just seems to be times. It's not necessarily the scoring droughts anymore to me. It's not necessarily not putting the ball in the basket. It's just a lack of intensity, which leads to those problems. And to me, that's purely a coaching thing. I don't care who your players are. Now, this I want to get your opinion on. Um, by the way, SC Scott guy, who's a South Carolina guy, says he thinks that Tennessee is totally fine. I do too, by the way. Um, I think you lose these games in the SEC. That's just what uh, that's what things are. Dylan Plowman, who we're not sure if he's related to Don Day Plowman or not, says Viscovi has progressively gotten worse, in my opinion, and JJJ is so dang inconsistent. Then boys have to put up uh, some more shots and effort. I'll say this about Viscovi, and he lost his grandmother, and I want to be as empathetic as I possibly can and listen. Um, I was very close to my grandmother, so if he said, I'm giving up basketball and I want to do missionary work because I understand there's bigger things in life, I, I would respect that. Um, but what you can't let happen is you can't let this stretch out the entire season because your grandmother wouldn't want that. Um, you're not going to be happy with yourself looking back. If, if that was a life-changing event and you need to take a new direction in life, I respect you. If he said, I, I want to give it basketball tomorrow, but you don't you don't want to let this continue to be a distraction. Well, no, that, she wouldn't want that. 
Yeah, but Vescovi's found himself, guys. Guys, Vescovi over the last three games has scored 10, 12, and 10 points. Oh, during that time period, he is 10 of 22 from three. Vescovi's back. Now, Josiah George James, I'm going to tell you guys what the problem with Josiah George James is, and it's the same problem you guys said with the missed layups last night. Dave, what's the biggest result of missed layups? What's the biggest cause of missed layups and missed free throws outside of lack of focus or intensity? Uh, I really don't know where you're going here. Fatigue. Oh, fatigue. fatigue. And Josiah Jordan James is logging 30 minutes a night because here's what Barnes is asking Josiah Jordan James to be the preeminent perimeter defender while also helping Adu defend the post. He's gassed on offense, guys. And this is the problem. I told you guys this two weeks ago. Barnes is running eight guys. Josiah Jordan James' well, legs are gone. He shouldn't be practicing right now. He's so tired. And listen, everybody, pump the brakes. And I'm talking to you too, Caleb, on your thoughts on the expectations of Tennessee in the NCAA tournament. So I'm putting this on you. They beat Vanderbilt, which is a rival. Uh, and they have Kentucky. Okay, that Vanderbilt team is up. terrible. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And they have Kentucky coming up. I mean, that this is the classic donut game, a team that's right outside the top 25 and wants to prove itself against the top five team. <sighs> Yes, but this is the way they lost. They are tired. They are tired right now. If you're well, tired, before, and it's not February. It's not even February, and they're tired because Barnes is not running enough guys. Okay, that may be the case. It just doesn't change uh, the, the way I, I look uh, at Tennessee moving forward. Uh, Trex, Trex, Trex said uh, we look flat. Trex, Trex, Trex also says Caleb's right. Um, we hear that uh, by the way, Dylan Plowman says, uh, Dylan says, Dylan Plowman says, I'm not in fact, I, I'm, I am in fact not kin to Dante, although that would be a great source if, uh, if we were, uh, don't think that I wasn't going to try and try and find out here in just the next couple of seconds. So I appreciate that. I'm always digging. There's always news to break and, uh, there we go. So it's out there. Uh, our Thursdays are completely awesome. We love that. And our Fridays, we got Ron Slay. So uh, we've got a lot going on on the program. A, uh, to be honest with you guys, I'm moving houses. So we had a special announcement planned. We're going to do that next week. And it's going to be your opportunity to win lots of stuff. And when I say lots of stuff, I'm talking about weekly prizes and a monthly grand prize uh, as, as a part of our new uh, new club, individual club called Hooker's Corner. So we're excited about that. But I'll tell you more about that because uh, right now we got to move. And uh, this is uh, all about me on helping for some reason. Like I've paid the movers. He's Caleb Calhoun. I'm Dave Hooker. This has been a presentation.